I want to talk a little bit more about protein supplements, okay? Um, we've talked extensively about the milk protein isolates, whey and casein. Um, I get I get asked questions all the time about this, and unlike you, I don't know the answers. So I'm kind of like, you know, my answer is I don't think that matters. But for example, my wife's friends always ask me about collagen. Hey, should I be consuming this collagen or that collagen or this collagen? And, I, and my response is, I don't think that matters. I frankly think you're just better off consuming a high quality protein that has a balance of all of the amino acids. But uh, tell folks, first of all, what collagen is, um, and then maybe answer my question about whether or not there's a, a unique benefit to consuming collagen uh, as a supplement. I'm almost thinking like I should do less research, so I, I, I don't get all these questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so collagen is a protein uh, that is a very, uh, I mean, it's pretty prevalent in your body because it's the it's the main protein that is uh, used for uh, structural uh, proteins. It's a structural protein. So collagen is in your cartilage, your bone, your tendons, your ligaments, um, and all of that. And it's also in muscle, a very small amount relatively, in order to, and it's important to transfer the force of your connect of, of your muscle towards your tendons. So even in the muscle, all of your contractile proteins need to be uh, linked to collagen in order or connective tissue proteins in order to transfer the force. Now, um, a lot of people are in the market you see now ingest collagen supplements because it helps you with uh, strength, force, skin, bone ligaments and stuff like that so we're interested in because um it's a very nice source of glycine and proline about 50 percent of your collagen is glycine and proline so it's a poor protein from a total perspective it's not as balanced as, a, as an animal derived uh, meat protein or milk protein so but it contains a lot of glycine and proline so what you could say is that hey your ligaments, your cartilage, your bone also contains a lot of glycine and proline. And so it's a good source of these two amino acids. Um, makes perfect sense. So the story is uh, makes sense, but it's a little bit like, um, yeah, if you eat something that you need, it's going to be better for you. But the question is, do we already get enough glycine and proline in our diet and is additional uh, via collagen of additional value. Now, that is something that we don't know. And we have been starting to look at this. And so we've been ingesting collagen and whey protein after exercise. And then we look at myofibrillar protein synthesis, but also muscle connective protein synthesis. And I hope that doesn't go too fast. Exercise stimulates both myofibrillar as well as conne muscle connective protein synthesis. So the adaptive response in muscle is both connective proteins as well as my fibular proteins. Now, if you ingest protein, it further increases the response to exercise and you see greater myofibular protein synthesis. However, the ingestion of dairy protein or protein does not seem to increase muscle connective protein synthesis rates. So, so far, at least for up to six hours after exercise, your contractile muscle responds to protein in addition to exercise, but your muscle connective does not. Now, we've tried that also with collagen, and we do not see a greater increase in connective tissue protein synthesis rates in muscle. So either it is not happening in the first five hours, and the exercise is already a stimulus enough, and the response is later on, or there's a, a, enough glycine and proline in dairy protein. How much are you seeing in the muscle connective tissue response to dairy? I, I was under the impression, based on what you said, that it was virtually none. Is it some, but just pales in comparison to the exercise? It pales to, in, the, in comparison to the exercise, exactly. Okay. It's no significant increase in muscle connective protein synthesis uh, in addition to the exercise effect. Have you done this activity or this experiment without exercise? So you can, because obviously exercise is such a potent stimulus that as you said, it might be dwarfing what we yeah. see. And and what is that? Have you done that experiment? Let me look what, uh, so you're saying without exercise. Yes, we also done it without exercise and it does not seem to be responsive to nutrition, 
But I have to uh, make an exception in that study by Jorn, that huge amount of protein, that 100 grams, we suddenly see it. Uh, interesting. So in that study where you gave the massive dose of protein, and those were not exercising patients. Over a longer period of time, yeah. But that was exercise as well. I see. But that, oh, that was exercise. Okay. And that, but that was also, was yeah. Okay. So it seems that based on those data, there is no benefit in both myofibular or muscle connective tissue protein synthesis using collagen versus using whey or casein. So if exactly. a person is taking a collagen protein because they believe that it will disproportionately help them increase the strength of their connective tissue, the data would say that that is not correct, at least in the presence of an exercising individual. Yes. Over, um, over five I, hours, I guess, to be fully yes. complete. Okay. And I how and so what I hold, uh, so from a practice translation, um, I still hold an option open for ligaments, tendons, bone, cartilage. Because when I look at muscle connective protein, the fraction that we actually take out of the muscle contains only a few percent of collagen. So the muscle doesn't contain a lot of collagen. So the question is, is it not more important for tendons, ligaments, bone, and cartilage? I wouldn't say, say that it's not working there. So again, we are also athletes, we're also patients, and we're also scientists. So as a, as a scientist, I haven't seen evidence that it actually leads to greater connective uh, tissue protein synthesis rates. But if I would actually break my hip, or I would actually have a major issue with my knee, and I'm recovering and rehabilitating, I think I would take uh, both a protein supplement that also has a little bit of collagen in order to be sure that I get enough glycine and protein. Yeah. But that's I, me but, as an but, individual. But, but I would say that the, 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 you know, the other point to consider is if there are people listening to this who are just using collagen as their supplemental protein source, they're undoubtedly compromising myofibrillar muscle protein synthesis, because as you said, they're basically just getting a lot of proline and glycine, and they're probably really missing out on leucine, lysine, methionine, and the other amino acids it's that a, are far more potent. Very, it's a very low quality protein from the perspective of amino acid balance. Yes. Yeah. But it's a nice source of glycine and proline. But if you take enough protein, probably the glycine and proline is already sufficiently available in your diet. However, if you have major issues with ligaments, tendons, or other almost purely collagen-based structures, it might be a benefit. I'm not throwing that away. That is something that we still want to look at for the next few years, but the jury is still out on that.